Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me for another edition of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm your host today. And we're going to be talking more about the uh, recently passed City Ordinance uh, 1814, the Fire Safety uh, Ordinance. And we've had several shows on this, but I have a, an update, and that's going to be of some interest, uh, I hope, to uh, associations. Uh, of high-rise residential buildings. And this is condominiums and co-ops and uh, any type of residential apartment buildings. But anyway, uh, uh, there was a meeting on uh, last uh, Friday between some uh, professional uh, engineers uh, who are tasked by the ordinance to do the life safety evaluation. They met with the fire department. Uh, because they had some concerns about implementation. And as I said on previous shows, this is not a done deal. I mean, it's a work in progress, and we are getting more and more clarification. But the good news for condominiums is, uh, it could, for condominiums and high rises, is that I'm, I have on good authority that the cost of a life safety evaluation is going to run between five and $20,000. About three weeks ago, somebody came up to me at a seminar and said that their association had set aside $150,000 for a life safety evaluation. I said, why? I mean, that's crazy. And when I went to and told the ch uh, fire chief, he, he agreed with me. He says, that's, you know, that's outrageous. It's not going to cost that much money. And so for those of you who are listening, I hope you tell uh, your association members and other people who uh, sit on boards, on associations, and property managers out there, I have it on good authority that the life safety valuation should not exceed $20,000 unless you've got some real strange problems with your building. But, you know, let me take a few minutes and talk about the ordinance. For those of you who don't know about the fire safety ordinance that was passed in May of uh, this year, and this was in reaction to the Marco Polo fire that happened in July of last year. And those of you who, who saw it on television and on your computers, I mean, it was a horrific fire. And it, it, it just spread so quickly throughout the, the building that um, in, in response, the mayor came back with a bill that required all high rises to be retrofitted for fire sprinklers. and. Um, I'm pleased to report that I was appointed to be on the uh, fire safety task force to deal with uh, the concerns raised by this, uh, uh, by the mayor's bill. And I was there as a representative of the uh, condo associations, one of the representatives there representing condo associations. And we worked with uh, the city officials and the fire department and, and engineers and um, others uh, who are stakeholders in, in, on this issue, to come up with a, uh, some changes to the mayor's bill so that, you know, condos, the, the end result is a compromise bill. It's a bill that we didn't really like, and the mayor, I'm sure, didn't like. But, you know, it was a compromise bill. It did call for mandatory sprinklers, but it allowed, at the end, uh, for condos and high-rises to opt out of that provision, uh, subject to certain conditions. Okay, okay. But the, right now, the bill basically says that all high-rise residential buildings have to be uh, retrofitted for fire sprinklers, except if you're under 10 stories or you have open exterior corridors. That means if you walk out your unit door and, and there's no wall, you, you, there's air, uh, that means that if you have that in your building and no interior closed quarters, you don't have to do sprinklers. And there are about 300 buildings in Honolulu, high-rise residential, and this is co-ops and condos and apartment buildings, and about half of them are either below 10 stories or have open exterior quarters. But everybody has to do a life safety evaluation, and a life safety evaluation 
is an inspection of the building uh, by professional architects and engineers uh, who, who then report, uh, make a report to the fire department as to the safety of your building. And they basically look at 17 items and they uh, make a report. Uh, they report their findings on something that is, a, is, is called the matrix. It's a spreadsheet developed by the fire department. And throughout uh, our program, you're gonna see something scrolling. There it is right now. That's the website for the fire department. And that's where you go and you, you can look at the matrix. And uh, the matrix is basically a spreadsheet. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's basically a spreadsheet. And, it, and uh, the engineers can download it for free from the city and they would be engaged by the associations to go through their buildings and check off certain uh, uh, items in the buildings and report it to the uh, city. And in order to avoid having to put in sprinklers, the buildings that aren't exempt from sprinklers, that means anything over 10 stories and with interior corridors, you have to pass uh, the life safety evaluation. And uh, this life safety evaluation uh, basically concentrates on 17 items and they're listed on the spreadsheet. That's why I, I suggest that you, if you're, if you're an association board member or a property manager or a site manager or a resident manager, you wanna become real familiar with the 17 items on the matrix because that's what they come and they're, they're, you're gonna be checked on. And some things you can change and some things you can't, like the height of the building, what kind of construction uh, is, uh, is, is in the building, how far is it from the middle of the building to the uh, exterior stairwells, how many standpipes you have. These are things you can't change. And so if, if you have them, it, it's, it's probably a plus. And if you don't have them, then you're in trouble. But what it does is the life safety evaluation basically goes through your building and checks for certain things. And then, um, and if you get a passing score, you don't have to put in fire sprinklers. And even if, and, and, but, and, and even if you don't get a passing score, you would then work with your professional who did the inspection and find out, well, let's see, you missed it by two points, you missed it by four points, and what can you do to get a passing score so you don't have to put in fire sprinklers. And in the end, if you choose not, I mean, even if you can't, if you can't pass it, you need to, you can opt out. You can opt out and, um, and you do that through a, uh, if you're a condominium, you do that at an annual meeting. If you're a, or if you're a co-op, you also do it at an annual meeting, but you, t you, you have to vote. The shareholders vote in a co-op, the uh, uh, members of the association vote in a condo and you vote to opt out of the, uh, uh, the ordinance and you have to post a sign saying that you do not have uh, sprinklers uh, in the building and you have to make sure that uh, any prospective buyers uh, who are interested in buying in your project are aware that you don't have sprinklers and that's easy to do because um, uh, when uh, you sell a condominium you, you have to f uh, fill out this form. Uh, the, the, the seller of the unit has to fill out the form. And one of the uh, questions that can be added to the form is whether or not the building has got fire sprinklers. And that's how you notify prospective uh, uh, buyers uh, and whether or not uh, there are uh, sprinklers in the building. And um, now, now this, this um, uh, matrix, that um, uh, is on the website. The reason why I suggest that uh, the you listeners, if you're board members, property managers, or site managers become very familiar is because you should take this web, uh, matrix and, and walk your board members, if you're a site manager or a property manager, make sure your board members walk the building and know what these uh, items are. Uh, because I know when, when I was on the committee and they came up with this matrix, I didn't know what a standpipe was. I, and now I know what a standpipe is. I know that fire-rated doors on the corridors 
have metal plates on it. And if they don't have the metal plates, then they're not fire rated. And, uh, and you may say, well, what does it matter? And it's like if you, well, you, a lot, most uh, associations don't want to put in sprinklers because of the cost. It's tremendously expensive to retrofit a building. And, the, and that's what's you know, driving the resistance to retrofit is because it costs so much. And the, the unit owners would have to pay uh, for uh, retrofitting their units. And we're talking about a substantial amount, maybe forty, fifty, uh, $60,000 per unit. And that's not including what those unit owners would have to pay to, to install them in the common areas. Plus, uh, if you're going to be installing, retrofitting your building uh, with uh, fire sprinklers, you have to have a 10 by 10 room somewhere in the project uh, to install a pump uh, to force all the water that you know is going to be needed by this sprinkler system. And, and, and that's a problem because most uh, buildings are maxed out and nobody has an extra 10 by 10 room uh, to uh, install a, a pump that can you know, otherwise service this uh, fire sprinkler system. And so, you know, so there are lots of issues uh, and reasons why people don't want to install uh, the fire system, I mean, fire, the fire sprinklers. And that's why, you know, it's, it's important uh, if they uh, want to pass this life safety evaluation uh, that they understand the matrix and what it takes. Uh, the professionals that um, are going to be doing the inspection and walking through the building, they will be charging the associations for their professional time, which, because the matrix is free. The, the matrix is on the fire department website. Here it is again. Anybody who wants to go can get it. it it's showing on the bottom of our screen. And the professionals can go and they download this matrix. And so they have the software that's being provided to them by the city for free. So the cost of a life safety evaluation only is, is only for the professional time that the, uh, the uh, professionals are in your building, the architects and engineers. So that means if they're in your building for 10 hours, they ha can charge you, I mean, the cost is going to be 10 hours times their hourly rate, which is somewhere around, uh, I think it's around $200 or, or more. So, you know, you have to take this into consideration. So you, if the, the, the more you are familiar with the matrix and the items that have to be inspected, and if you can prepare for uh, the inspection before the professionals come to your building, that means they're going to be spending less time in your building and it's going to result in less cost. And so let's say, uh, you know, it, it's going to cost uh, $20,000 at, uh, at a maximum, and it's $200 an hour. Uh, it looks like um, that would be uh, maybe 10 hours. I'm sorry, 100 hours. Okay, so that might, might mean two and a half weeks. For, for a professional to be in your building. And, and we're gonna take a break now for about a minute, and then when we come back, I'm gonna go into specifics about what you need to know about in order to negotiate this agreement that you're gonna be entering into with these professionals to come and do the life safety evaluation for your building. So let's take a break now, and I'll be back. Thank you. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana 
all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Okay, welcome back uh, to Condo Insider. My name is Jane Sugimura, I'm your host today, and we're talking about negotiating the life safety valuation contract. And you know, I talked about the matrix and where you can get it, and we're scrolling the uh, website for the uh, fire department. That's where you can go and get a copy of the matrix. And I suggest that all of you go ahead and do it. One of the things that happened at this meeting that I talked about earlier between the professionals and the fire department on Friday is that they determined that one of the issues, one of the factors that would be used to determine, risk, one of the risk factors was mobility. Mobility was if you had a person who had uh, problems walking and how, whether or not they could walk to a safe area or walk down, step, down the steps uh, uh, out of a high-rise building. And that became problematic. And my understanding from the meeting that happened on Friday is mobility has been removed as a risk factor. So, so now, whether or not you have people who have uh, mobility problems, that means somebody has a problem walking around, uh, whether they're in a wheelchair, a walker, or maybe they just you know, can't walk very fast. But now that is no longer a risk factor. And so um, that's, uh, and on page one of the matrix, it does have different risk factors. And for example, the smaller the building, the smaller the risk. And the risk is, the risk uh, is how long can it take to get the residents out of a building in case of an emergency, and how long does it take for the first responders, like the fire department or the emergency people, to get into the building to deal with the emergency. And so the shorter the building, the less risky. The higher the building, the longer it takes for people to get out and for people to go up and deal with the emergency. And so the, the, the height of a building is a risk factor. Mobility at one time was a risk factor. It is no longer a risk factor. And, um, and I, I think that uh, addresses a lot of concerns that associations were faced with, because that meant that you know, every building was going to have to figure out how many people in their building had mobility issues, and how would that affect the life safety, the safety evaluation. And the professional said that that was just something that was not workable, that they could not certify. And so the fire department agreed that that um, factor, risk factor, could be removed. And one other thing that uh, uh, happened was this interior finishes, corridor, and exits. That's one of the items on um, the matrix. And that only applies, uh, the fire department made it real clear to the professionals that the interior finishes were only as to the corridors. They, the, the, the inspectors, this meant that the inspectors did not have to go into the units, we, because our position was, you can, you know, the, the the fire safety ordinance did not contemplate that the uh, inspectors would have to go into the units, and we would consider that intrusive and almost impossible for an association to deal with, because if you have 300 units, and you have to coordinate an inspector going into all 300 units, that's just not going to happen, and it's going to be so expensive, uh, time consuming. Uh, for an inspect, uh, for an architect or an engineer at their hourly rate of $200 to do that. So that's just not doable. So anyway, we know from that meeting on Friday that interior finish is only for corridors and not inside units. We also know that the fire department and the professionals came to some kind of understanding about the construction between the walls and uh, the, the building itself between different rooms. And so in order, in order to test that, the agreement reached between the professionals and the fire department was that the professionals would uh, inspect a representative number of units. That means they would go into 
it, it, in other words, and this is something that the association can negotiate with their professionals. The, the, the agreement was that the professionals could inspect a representative uh, sample. And a rep representative sample could be 10 percent, it could be 20 percent, it could be five. And, and, you know, but this is something that uh, an association can negotiate with the vendor whenever, you know, so if you are dealing with a professional who gives you a proposal, that's something that the association would want to know. How many units are you considering to be a representative sample when you go in to check the walls? And, you know, with concrete, w w if it's not concrete, they're going to have to make a boring, and I'm told it's going to be a small hole, less than an inch, they put in a camera to check the width of the wall because that would uh, give the professional uh, uh, an indication of the safety. How long would it take for the fire to burn through th that wall at that width? And so they're going to be doing that. And I've been told by the professional, if it was him, he would do the he would do the boring. He would just fill it up, or the resident manager would come in and uh, fill in the hole, and it would, it would be uh, easy to fix, and it would be very quick. Uh, he wouldn't, they wouldn't have to spend more than maybe 15 or 20 minutes inside a unit, and with a representative sample, uh, they would pro he would look at like maybe 10 percent. And, you know, these things are negotiable. That's why it's important for the associations and their board members to become very familiar with this matrix, because there's things on here that you can negotiate, and if some vendor says to you, uh, I want to go into, you know, 50 percent, you say, well, no thank you, I'm going to check with someone else. And, I, you know, I would go with the, the, pers the vendor who, who will agree to 10 percent or less as a representative sample. And, um, and, when, when, and, and they're talking about, and one other thing that, uh, that the professionals and the fire department agree on is uh, that the uh, professionals can deputize or use other contractors or workers that can go and do some of the inspections at a lower rate than their professional rate. Let's say uh, 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 an architect is $200 an hour. You don't want to pay even a junior architect to go around and check the smoke alarms in the units, because that's one of the items. One of the items is how many smoke alarms, where are they located, because you get plus points if you have one in every bedroom and one in the hallway. You get plus points if they're connected. Okay, so you, do you want to pay an architect at their hourly rate of $200? And, you know, the professor says, no, we don't want to send our people to do that. So uh, there is an amendment sitting before the city council, which uh, uh, council member Kara Fukunaga has agreed to insert into the um, uh, ordinance, that's Bill 72, and it changes the language of the uh, bill so that it says that the life safety evaluation will be done by a profession, by or under the supervision of a uh, professional. That means that when you do your life safety, when you do your high risk component inspection, you people live in condominiums, you can send along with your plumber, send a maintenance person to check about smoke alarms in each unit. And that person can also check the doors to see if they are a, a, an inch and three quarters wide, whether they're solid core and whether they have a, uh, a um, metal automatic closer. And these things can be put into a report and can be handed to the professional, and then they can then look at a representative sample, let's say 10%. And if you have a building of 300 units, that means that they would have to go into 30 of the units and just make sure that the information uh, is consistent with the report that's given to them by the maintenance person that was deputized to assist them. And th these are things that if you know, ahead, uh, know about ahead of time, you can incorporate them into your negotiations and you can you know, uh, reduce the cost uh, for this life safety evaluation. That's why you know, the range is from five to 20,000, because it depends on how much time the uh, professional has to spend in your building. And if you've got people on your staff who can, you know, do the inspections and submit a report to your professional, that's going to take off a, a whole lot of time uh, for them. 
And, um, and one thing that you know, the, uh, the professionals uh, are, are looking for is, uh, you know, th they're looking for, right now, I know that there, there's an issue with vertical openings. Vertical openings, uh, for those of you who don't know, because I didn't know what a vertical opening was either, when they build a building, they have to make holes for the pipes that go from the first floor all the way up to the 40th floor. All your plumbing has, you know, there's pipes that go through the, uh, the floors. And after, I think I'm told that before 1980, they didn't require the vertical openings to be sealed, but after 1980, they did require them to be sealed. And so um, we were told that, you know, in the Marco Polo, one of the, the big hazards was there were vertical openings in the Marco Polo where the fire just, just allowed the fire to spread throughout the building. And, <clears throat> but you know, the professionals have told the fire department that you know, they can't really deal with vertical openings because that would mean making wall, holes in the walls of all the units. And if the buildings were built before 1980, none of the vertical openings are sealed. So that would be a horrendously expensive project. So that's a question mark. Like I said, it's not a done deal. The, 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 the life safety evaluation is not a done deal. The fire department is looking at the issue of vertical openings, and they may be making changes to that on the matrix. They may even be removing the vertical openings as an item on the um, a matrix, and you know, I, I'm running out of time right now. Uh, but you know, what I want to do in a future program, because like I said, it's not a done deal, uh, and uh, we, I'd like to have on our program somebody from the fire department and a professional who would be doing the life safety evaluation to talk about exactly what agreements have been made about what they're looking for, what has to, you know, what uh, associations. Uh, can do to make the process easier. But right now, we do have information that the fire department is working with the professionals to clarify what has to be done. And we now know that the cost of doing a life safety evaluation is going to be, it's going to run from five to 20,000. Uh, and that's just a rough estimate. And like I said, it's not a done deal yet. It may be less, it may be more. Uh, and uh, what I ask is that you stay tuned because it is a work in pro pro uh, progress and we are all working to try to make it uh, easier, faster, and uh, cheaper uh, because we know that uh, this is a long-term project that is going to involve uh, condominium associations for many, many, many years. So you need to be patient. You need to be patient. We're all working really hard to try to clarify it so that it isn't uh, so confusing anymore. And I hope you join us next week uh, where we will have another show on uh, uh, condominium living and uh, for people who live and work in condominiums. Thank you for joining us today and uh, good afternoon.